Hello students, welcome back. Let's continue with integers exercise 1e. This is on page number 17. Question 15. Points A, B, C and D are marked on a number line as shown below. So you can see the points here A, B, then we have C and D and each point has a value. A is 3, B 8, C is minus 9 and D is minus 3. Now we have to answer a few questions. So the first one is find A minus B. So we substitute A and B with the values given. So A is given as 3. As you can see A is given as 3. 3 minus B. Now B is 8. So let's write that down. 3 minus 8. So here you can see the signs are different, isn't it? When signs are different, we put the sign of the bigger number and we subtract. 8 minus 3 is 5. So here our first answer is minus 5. Next one, D plus C. Now D is minus 3 and C is minus 9. We have to add both. So let's do that. D is minus 3 plus C is minus 9. Now let's open the brackets here. Minus 3. And when you have plus before a bracket, there's no change in the other sign. So that's minus 9. Now signs are the same. Put the same sign and add. 3 plus 9 is 12. So this is our answer. Minus 12. Question 3. Once again, we look at the number line and the values of C and A are given. C is minus 9 and A is 3. We have to add up C and A. So let's substitute the values. C is minus 9 plus A is 3. Signs are different. Put the sign of the bigger number and subtract. 9 minus 3 is 6. So what is the answer here? Minus 6. Next one, B minus C. The value of B is 8 and C is minus 9. We have to subtract the 2. So let's do that. Value of B is 8 minus C is minus 9. So we write it this way, minus 9. Now let's open the brackets, 8. Now minus before a bracket, so change the sign of the other integer, that is, it becomes plus. 8 plus 9 is 17. And this is our final answer. Question 16. At a place, the temperature on Monday was 30 degrees Celsius. It rose by 3 degrees Celsius on Tuesday. So on Monday it was 30 degrees. It rose means it went up. Went up by 3 degrees on Tuesday and then dropped by 8 degrees Celsius on Wednesday. Now we have to find the temperature on this place on Tuesday and Wednesday. We know that it rose by 3 degrees on Tuesday and then it dropped by 8 degrees on Wednesday. But we don't know what the temperature was on these days. So let's find that out. So let's begin by writing the temperature of a place on Monday. Okay, we are writing what is given to us already is 30 degrees Celsius or 30 degrees centigrade. Now the rise in temperature on Tuesday, it rose by 3 degrees Celsius. So on Monday it was 30 degrees and on Tuesday it rose by 3 degrees. So now we have to find the temperature on Tuesday. Monday was 30, it rose by 3 degrees. That means all you have to do is add to find this. 30 plus 3 is 33 degrees Celsius. This was the temperature on Tuesday. Now, the drop in temperature given to us in the question is 8 degrees. On Wednesday, it dropped by 8 degrees Celsius. Now, we have to find the temperature on Wednesday. So, on Tuesday, it was 33 degrees so 33 degrees from there it dropped. That means it's less now. So when we subtract these two, we will know the temperature on Wednesday. So let's do that. 33 minus 8. So here let's borrow 2. 13 minus 8 is 5. And then 2. So we have 25. So the temperature on Wednesday was 25 degrees Celsius. So what are the two answers? We found both the answers. The temperature on Tuesday was 33 degrees Celsius and on Wednesday the temperature was 25 degrees Celsius. So we've got both our answers.
question 17 how much does 35 exceed minus 35 that means 35 is more than minus 35 let me give you a simple example now, if i ask you by how much does 5 exceed 2 5 is greater than 2 isn't it by how much does 5 exceed 2 5 exceeds 2 by 3 isn't it now 5 is 3 more than 2. Now, how do we get that? By subtracting these two, 5 and 2. Similarly, here also, we have to subtract these two to get our answer. So, by how much does 35 exceed minus 35? We have to subtract 35 minus minus 35. So, let's open the brackets here. 35, when you see minus before a bracket, change the sign of the other integer. So, that becomes plus 35. 35 plus 35 is 70. So, what is our answer? Our final answer is 70. That means 35, look, it's given in the question, 35 exceeds minus 35 by 70 or 35 is more than minus 35 by 70. Let's go to the next one. Question 18, how much is minus 12 less than 3? Again, let's think of a simple example. Now, if I take 5 again, 5 and 7, 5 is less than 7, isn't it? By how much is 5 less than 7? Now, if we minus these two, we will get it. That is, 7 minus 5 is 2. So, similarly, here also we have to minus these two to get the answer. That means 3 is greater, so that has to come first. So, 3 minus minus 12. So, this will be 3. When you see minus before a bracket, change the sign of the other integer, it becomes plus. So, 3 plus 12. 3 plus 12 is 15. So, the answer is 15. That means minus 12 is 15 less than 3. So, whenever you get questions like th these and it's a little difficult to understand, Substitute these values with simple numbers to make it easy for you to understand. Question 19. Subtract minus 34 from the sum of 57 and minus 51. Sum means we have to do addition. So, add up these two and the answer that you get, you're going to subtract minus 34 from that answer. So, first step is we have to find the sum. It means add 57 plus minus 51. So, do the addition of these two. So, let's do open the bracket 57 plus before a bracket means no change in the sign. Now, here there are two different signs. When signs are different, put the sign of the bigger number and subtract 57 minus 51 is 6. So, we've got plus 6. Now, let's go to the second part that is this part. Subtract minus 34 from plus 6. That means plus 6 has to come first. So, plus 6 minus minus 34. So, let's open the brackets. So, this is plus 6. When you see minus before a bracket, change the sign of the other integer. It becomes plus 34. So, here we have plus 6 plus 34. That means 6 plus 34 which is 40 and the sign is plus. It's understood it's plus. So, our final answer to this question is 40. Question 20. Write a pair of negative integers whose difference is 8. That means I have to have two negative integers. When I minus, the answer should be 8. Now, I have two boxes here and I'm going to put two negative integers inside them. I'm going to subtract them and get 8. Now, think of two numbers. When you minus, you get 8. Think of two simple numbers. What about 10 minus 2? 10 minus 2 will give us 8. So, what are the two numbers? 10 and 2. Now, which is the bigger number here? The bigger number is 10, isn't it? So, put the bigger number in the second box. That is, 10 is here. Now, take the smaller number and put it in the first box. Now, here it says negative integers. So, I'm going to make both minus. Okay. So, I have minus 2 and minus 10. Now, difference is 8. Difference means I'm going to subtract the 2. 
and this should be equal to 8. Now let me write this as a proper question. So I have minus 2 minus minus 10. Let's see what I get. So now I'm going to open my brackets minus 2. When I open my other bracket, I must see the sign before the bracket. It's minus. So minus 10 will now become plus 10. Now signs are different. Put the sign of the bigger number and subtract. Bigger number has a plus sign. Now 10 minus 2 is 8. So did you get plus 8? That is given in the question. Difference is 8. So what is the pair of negative integers that we got? Minus 2 and minus 10. Now you can think of any two numbers. When you subtract, it will give you 8. But follow this rule like I did. I took 10 minus 2 is 8. Then I took the bigger number and put it into the second box. Took the smaller number and put it into the first box. Now when you subtract these, make a question like this. You will get your final answer. So what is the pair of negative integers that we took? We used minus 2 and minus 10. So this is our answer. Minus 2 and minus 10 are the pair of negative integers whose difference is 8. Question 21. Write a positive integer and a negative integer whose sum is minus 15. So this time one integer is positive, the other integer is negative and we are finding the sum and the sum should be minus 15. So again I have two boxes here. I am going to put one positive integer and one negative integer inside and I am going to add up both and my sum should be minus 15. Now think of two numbers. When you subtract, you get 15. Two numbers, when you subtract, you get 15. What about 20 minus 5? 20 minus 5 is 15, isn't it? Or you can say 25 minus 10 is 15. Or you can say 30 minus 15 is 15. You can take any two numbers. Now, since my answer has a negative sign, the bigger number of these two should be the negative integer. So 20 is a bigger number. So 20 should be the negative integer. You can put it in the first box or the second box because this is addition. So let's put minus 20 here. So this is negative. And the second number that's 5, we'll make it positive. We'll simply write 5. So let's write this question. Minus 20 plus 5. When signs are different, put the sign the bigger number and subtract 20 minus 5 is 15. So we've got our answer. The pair of numbers, one positive, one negative integer, whose sum is minus 15 uh, is minus 20 and plus 5. So one is negative and one is positive. So this is our answer. Minus 20 and plus 5. Now here also you can take any pair. Now again you can use this 25 minus 10 but remember the bigger number should have the negative sign. Similarly you can take 30 minus 15, 30 and 15 and the bigger number should be the negative one. 22. Evaluate minus 2 into minus 2 into minus 5 into 7. First, we're going to look at the negative integers. Let's count and see how many there are. 1, 2, 3. There are 3 negative integers. 3 is an odd number. That means our answer will be negative. So let's write that first. Our answer will have a negative sign. Now let's multiply the numbers. 2 twos are 4. 4 fives are 20. 20 into 7 is 2 into 7, 14, plus a 0. So 14 and 0. 140. A final answer here is minus 140. Question 2. Let's count all the negative integers. 1, 2, 3, 4. And 4 is an even number. That means our answer is positive. Now let's multiply the numbers. 1, 5 are 5. 5 4s are 20, 20 into 6, 6 2s are 12, 20 means add a 0, 120. 
So our final answer is plus 120. Question 23. In a class test containing 20 questions, 5 marks are given for every correct answer and minus 3 marks are given for each incorrect answer. A student of this class attempted all the questions, out of which only 12 were correct. Find the score of this student. Okay, so first thing, let's write down what's given to us to understand this problem better. So let's begin. Number of questions attempted. So how many questions were there? There were 20 questions and the students ha student has attempted all 20 questions. So number of questions attempted is 20. Then number of correct answers. Now how many answers were correct? 12 answers were correct. It's given to us in the question. 12 answers were correct. That means the remaining were incorrect. So how to find that? 20 minus 12. So 20 minus 12. Let's subtract to find how many incorrect or wrong answers were there. So 10 minus 2 is 8. So how many incorrect answers were there? There were 8 incorrect answers. So this is what we have found out now. 20 questions the student has attempted in that 12 answers were correct and the remaining were incorrect that is 80. Now let's continue. Marks for each correct answer given to us in the question is 5 marks are given for every correct answer. So what are the marks for each correct answer? 5 marks. And how many answers are there? 12 correct answers are there. So what are the marks she got for 12 correct answers? That will be 12 into 5. 12 fives are 60. So she's got 60 marks for the correct answers. So I hope you understood that. Marks for each correct answer is 5 and she got 12 correct answers. So what are the marks for 12 correct answers? 12 into 5 that is 60. Then marks for each incorrect answer. Now suppose she writes a wrong answer. Marks are going to be deducted minus 3. So for each incorrect answer it's going to be minus 3. Now how many incorrect answers did she get? She got 8 incorrect answers. For 1 it is minus 3. So for 8, how much will it be? 8 into minus 3. So this is plus and 3 has minus. Plus into minus is minus. Now let's multiply the numbers. 8 threes are 24. So the student has got 8 incorrect answers. That means she's going to lose 24 marks. 24 marks are going to be deducted. Now the student has actually got 60 marks because the student had 12 correct answers but because of the wrong answers the student is going to lose 24 marks. So how to find the final score by subtracting 60 and 24. So the final score is marks for the correct answer minus marks for the incorrect answer. So marks for the correct answer is 60 and because she has got 8 incorrect answers. So she's going to lose 24 marks. So A is 60 minus 24. So let's minus that. Let's minus 60 and 24 and see what the student gets. So this becomes 5 and 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. 5 minus 2 is 3. So the total marks that the student gets or the final score is 36. After taking away 24 for the wrong answers from the total correct answers that is 60. So 60 minus 24 we got 36. Question 24. Smitha starts moving from point A and takes 20 steps towards the north. Now since we are talking about directions I have drawn this for you to understand this better. We have east, west, north and south. Now the question says Smitha started moving from point A and takes 20 steps towards the north. So point A will be here and north is this way. Isn't it? So let's mark that. So this will be A. And 20 steps towards the north means she is moving in this direction. 20 steps to the north and each step is 40 centimeters in length. Okay. So let's write that. So this red marking is telling us about the 20 steps that the student took towards the north. So let's write down number of steps from point A to the north is 20 steps. 
isn't it? Now, the, what is the length of each step? Here it's given to us, length of each step is 40 centimeters. Each step that she took towards the north is 40 centimeters. So, what will be the distance covered from point A? That is from point A up to this point, up to 20 steps. What is the distance? So, that will be 20 steps into 40 centimeters because each step is 40 centimeters. So, 20 steps into 40 centimeters. Now, this will be 2 fours are 8 and then we have 2 zeros. So, that is 800 centimeters. So, this is the distance covered from point A. So, from point A up to this, she has covered 800 centimeters. Now, it says, she then she moves by taking 30 steps to the south. So, now she is at this point. She is going to move 30 steps to the south. So, this part she has already covered 20. If she has to move little more, that means to make it 30, she has to cover only 10 more steps. Because she has already covered 20 till here. And from here, 10 more steps will make the total 30. So, let's mark that. So, this is how much she has moved from this point to this point. Okay. Now, that is 30. So, we have 20 here. So, this much will be 10. 10 steps. 20 steps there. Totally 30. So, when she has come back together, it is 10 steps here. 20 plus 10. Now, let's continue reading the question. She moves by taking 30 steps to the south, each step being 28 centimeters long. Okay. So, when she moved back, each step was 28 centimeters. Now, let's write that down. Number of steps towards the south up to point B. Now, this is point B. The point where she has reached here is point B. How many steps has she taken? According to the question, she has taken 30 steps starting from here up to point B. She has taken 30 steps. Then, what is the length of each step? It's given to us in the question. It is 28 centimeters. Now, she has reached point B, isn't it, from the north. So, distance covered to point B will be the number of steps, that's 30, into the length of each step, which is 28. So, we have to multiply 28 into 30. Let's do that. 28 into 30. We'll multiply 28 into 3 first. So, 3 eights are 24, carry 2. 3 twos are 6, 7, 8. 8, 84. Now, you add the 0, it becomes 840. So, the distance covered to point B will be 840 centimeters. So, now we have found out a few things. Now, we have found out the distance she covered from point A as she went north 20 steps. And from there all the way up to point B, that is 20 plus 10, that's 30 steps, the distance that she has covered. Now, the main question is, if Smitha finally reaches point B, that is, if she reaches this point, find the distance between A and B. We've been asked to find only this distance between A and B. So, A is here this point and B is here only this distance which is only this 10 steps. Only the 10 steps we have to find the distance. Okay, so we are not going to find out for 20 and 30. You only need to find out 10 steps the distance that she has covered. So, how do we write that? We say the distance between A and B will be the distance covered to point B. Which is the distance covered to point B? 840 centimeters minus the distance covered from point A. That is, this distance, distance covered to point B from here to here minus from A to there. So, only this much is left. So, when you minus the two distances, you will find the distance between A to B. So, let's write that distance covered to point B, we found out to be 840 centimeters. Distance covered from point A, that is the first step here from point A is 800 centimeters. So, that is 800 centimeters and we have to minus the 2. 840 minus 800 is 40 centimeters. 
So that is a final answer. The distance between A and B is 40 centimeters. With that, children, we come to the end of this exercise. Thank you, children.